My name is Ian McMillan. I'm one of four vascular surgeons in the Ayrshire and Arran, um, and I help coordinate the activities of the, the aneurysm screening group. An aneurysm is where the wall of the artery, in this case the aorta, weakens and dilates and uh, the whole thing expands and becomes bigger and bigger over time. And the biggest risk of that is that it may rupture, which in general is a fatal event. The screening programme um, is aimed at men, uh, men in, uh, at the age of 65. Those younger than 65 are not eligible and those 66 and above can self-refer. But the main group is those of the, the year 65 and uh, they're sent a date, uh, an avenue, an appointment for an ultrasound scan. The same scan that's used in pregnancy. On the original invite, there's some information as part of the invitation um, and then that information is reiterated when they appear for the scan. Uh, the scanning technician goes over the information and uh, asks if there's any questions arising from it. And then once it's all clear that it's understood on both sides, then the, the scan is carried out. The risk was up with age. Uh, and the risk factors for it, in addition to age, would be people with high blood pressure, People will smoke cigarettes, um, those with a family history of an aneurysm, um, and those who have arterial disease in general, be it a previous stroke or heart attack or whatever. The larger aneurysms that require surgical treatment are those aneurysms that have expanded to the critical diameter of 5.5 centimetres or more. Aneurysms below that level are in the surveillance uh, limb of the programme, but once you trip over the 5.5 centimetre uh, threshold, that leads to referral to the vascular unit, which will lead to a CT scan and thereafter uh, a discussion with your vascular surgeon about the options over treatment. And that treatment lies between either doing nothing, which doesn't often happen, or alternatively the open repair or a stent graft. In terms of how common it is, if you look at the, the men at the age of 65, just over 1% of the scans will be positive. Just over 1 in 100 will have a positive scan. But the majority of them are small aneurysms. In terms of the aneurysms that require a, an operation, only about 0.1% uh, will have a, a positive scan of that size. And only, in other words, 1 in 1,000 would require surgery at that point. The vast majority of smaller aneurysms that then go into the surveillance programme. There's little in the way of signs or symptoms until they rupture. Um, some have backache, but backache is such a non-specific symptom, it's not very helpful. Um, but the vast majority are asymptomatic, um, no symptoms, and then out of the blue, once it gets to a critical size, it, you know, it can rupture. The first patient we're going to see um, had a, what would be regarded as the conventional approach uh, over many, many years, and that was a cutting, open approach to the aneurysm, whereby we make a long incision in the abdomen and uh, go directly down onto the, the aneurysm itself, clamp it above and below the bulge, so there's a complete arrest of flow down the way. You clamp the vessels, and then you repair it on the inside and replace the damaged uh, section of artery with, with an artificial tube of material, usually a polyester material called Dacron. Well, my brother-in-law came over with a pamphlet and they says he was going to get checked. The phone number, he was going to get checked. Uh, so I said, oh. Never thought much about it. I said, then the wife says to me, why don't you go and get checked? And I said, well, there's never anything wrong with me. She said, I said, all right. So I phoned up, went for the scan, and I had a large aortic aneurysm, 6 to 8 centimetres. She tells you straight away you've got one when she does the ultrasound. Uh, the wife was with me, she called, she said, all right, if your wife comes in, I said, yeah. And that's when she told us. Okay. When she said that, I had an idea. Well, I, I began to worry 
what I was walking about with a time bomb more or less. And uh, when I, it was about a week later, I got worked to go and see the consultant, and I was straight in there. I had to know what this was. Well, they said I could have a stent, uh, but they said a stent can move and you've got to get it checked every so often. And he said if you did the operation it would be permanent. But he said it was a big operation, like told me a bit about yeah. that. But I said I would go for it if I was fit enough. So that's what we did. It went for the pre-op and got the pre-op and the anaesthetist, anaesthetist said when he heard about it, he said they gave you a year to live. Now I've checked up and everything, they'll give you a month. So I said, well, you better get me in. So I was in the Thursday, this was a Tuesday, I was in the Thursday, the operation on the Friday. Intensive care for a, one or two nights, and then back in the ward. And, uh, and I don't know how long I was in actually, about two or three days I think, that was all. And the friend told me to get home. You see, the trouble is, it's just as I'm sitting here, and you feel nothing. You have no idea you've got this. And I'd never even heard it, we've heard the aneurysm before, but I'd never even heard of this abdominal aortic aneurysm. And, uh, think to yourself, well, how long have I had this? Because the, the nurse says you could have had it for years. There's no pain, no inclination whatsoever. I mean, you feel weak after it. Although you're only in your bed for a few days, when you go to get up, you need help to go on your feet again. And then once you've been for a, sh a shower two or three times and that, you begin to walk around about with your zimmer. Walk around about the ward and that with your zimmer. You start to feel your strength coming back a bit. And then it's about well, two or three months, really, before you get back to full strength. You have to keep going wee walks and that to every day to get your steel legs back, so to speak. I got uh, all my brothers to go and get done because uh, somebody said it could be a family thing, which I don't know about, but they were all clear anyway. But I would advise anybody, uh, well, up to my age anyway at least, to go and get checked because you do not know you've got it. And that's the frightening bit. You don't know you've got it. There's no pain, no nothing. And if it hadn't been for that pamphlet, I wouldn't be here now. The second individual who uh, we interviewed um, had what is a new air, but not new approach. It's been around for a couple of decades now, uh, and that is a stent graft approach. So that does not involve the cutting approach to the abdomen. In general, that's done through an incision in the groin, uh, and a device is inserted in, uh, into the artery in the groin, the femoral artery, and it's fed up through the artery into the aorta, and a stent is deployed in the aneurysm, again rerouting the blood flow down the stent rather than into the aneurysm sac. So. That has a number of advantages, but some disadvantages. The advantages are it can even be done under local anaesthetic. Um, it probably is of shorter duration. It doesn't involve the full length cut in the abdomen with all the implications that would have for the patient's chest and lungs in terms of the recovery. Um, and there's a much more rapid recovery. Rather than being in hospital, say, for seven days after the, <coughs> the uh, conventional operation, it may only be a matter of three, four days, sometimes even less. The disadvantage is that the devices require continued surveillance 
uh, thereafter because they're made of a metallic mesh that can fracture or can move. So you're tied into a series of scans over many, many years. And that's usually initially in the first year CT scans, but thereafter an ultrasound scan, the ultrasound scan being the scan that was carried out in the original diagnosis of the aneurysm. I got a appointment through the post to do with um, amnerisms. So I went to Gerbin Hospital, where they gave me, I thought at first it was a baby scan, and, it, uh, and they found an aneurysm, 5.5 centimetres. Where I got an appointment to see Mr Macmillan, he explained that there was two forms. I could either have the operation where they wrap the aneurysm, or the stint. So after tests, like they got me on a bike, measuring my breadth, and uh, then they decided I have this uh, stint. Pricking the arm, a couple of hours later, I was back in the ward, ready for home. But uh, they kept me three days, obviously for tests and that, and uh, everything was fine. Mm -hmm. I'm a blacksmith, and that is very heavy work, gates and railings. So I had no indication at all, my strength and anything was not compromised. So I'd have gone on and told him, bump, I was dead. <laughs> Never knew what an amnesia was. No, you get no feeling, you're not ill, nothing. The only time you're going to know you got one is if it bursts. And bursts they do. It's called the silent killer. And if I hadn't have had it, I'd be dead now. Because I was on the borderline. Because it, it had grown up to six in the short time it took them to operate. Not a lot, I think it's common sense, you know, just eat less food that puts your belly out and get fitter. Okay. So we bought an enormous great dog and that's kept me fit. <laughs> if you get the leaf that come through the post, Please go and do it because because you never know. Obviously, I'd been carrying that for a couple of years or longer. I don't know how long it'd been growing, but like I said, no warning. It just bursts and it's a main artery, mm -hmm. so you weren't going to last very long. There is also the option of men who are 66 and more to self-refer, uh, and all the information that is available either in the GP surgery or in various health promotion venues. Although by and large in our experience what happens is that word of mouth is the most important communicator for self-referral. So I would urge men in their 65th year to attend for the ultrasound scan. It is a relatively simple scan which doesn't involve any injections, needles or anything invasive. Um, it's relatively simple to do. The initial appointment in the scan takes about 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, and may reveal what is our life-threatening uh, disorders. Mm -hmm.